All right, guys. So my name is Adriana Mendez, and I am a uh, founder and the community manager of Cypherglass, which is currently a standby block producer on EOS. And today I wanted to come and talk a little bit about what I've been up to the last 18 months. It's been an amazing experience, and I have so far been to about 14 countries all around the world discussing crypto and uh, EOS. So Cypherglass, as I mentioned, is a standby block producer, and this is my team. There are seven founding members, and you guys probably recognize Rob. He runs the Everything EOS podcast, which is the longest running EOS podcast out there. Highly recommend you guys check it out, especially if you're looking to develop on EOS. All right, so what is a block producer? Uh, funny enough, I have been in crypto for about two years, and even some of my closest crypto friends don't know what a block producer is. It's kind of a complicated subject and topic, but the essential of it is Thank you. Block producers produce blocks on the EOSIO blockchains. They are elected validators and nodes. EOSIO uses delegated proof of stake, also known as DPoS, to form consensus. And they are paid 1% out of the 5% network inflation. So how does DPoS work on EOSIO? Token holders elect block producers by staking EOS tokens for up to 72 hours. That's where they get their vote power from. The top 21 are elected to actually produce blocks on the network. Everyone else is paid an ancillary fee to be a standby. And elections are held every 120 seconds. So it's a consistent changing program. If you are interested in learning who those block producers are, you can go to Blocks.io. This is a really great block explorer produced by EOS Cafe and HK EOS. And as you can see here, two days ago, Cypherglass was number 41. We were a standby node in the United States. And you can kind of see some other stats on all the other block producers, things like daily rewards, and uh, where they're standing their nodes. So why EOS? When I first got involved with this project, I wanted to understand it from its core. And I wanted to understand why I would be pitching this technology, why it's great to develop on. And I came up with three core beliefs or core items. First, the transactions are very fast and block finality is very fast, which means that um, when you're you know, on this blockchain, it's very scalable. You can do a couple of transactions per second. The second is it has free transactions. So you're not paying for every transaction. You don't need gas to do that, which is pretty cool. And it uses WebAssembly languages like C++, Java, and Python. So these three facts make it a really attractive um, software to develop on, I think that we're seeing more and more dApps get added in the ecosystem and more developers choose EOSIO because of these three points. So back in February of 2018, I got a call from Rob. He was like, hey, I really want to stand up a block producer on this network and be a validator. Um, and I kind of just jumped in with him. So we started developing Cypherglass and uh, started working with the, EO the other EOS block producers. By June 14th, 2018, EOS mainnet was launched which kind of led us into what is a block producer. We started to ask ourselves some questions. What, what were the responsibilities of being a block producer? And we were all kind of in this giant experiment. Block one started holding these global hackathons. And the first one I attended was in London, England, on se September 22nd, 2018. That was my first time coming into contact with the entire EOS community. It was a really cool experience. And these are some of the pictures that I brought home from that experience. And as you can see, we had um, a couple of conferences, was meeting a bunch of people. Dan Larimer was there presenting. And I remember it getting me very excited about the technology and the community. And that's when we started to formulate this um, idea of what a block producer should be. I kind of figured that I needed to get out into the world and see more communities and what they were using this technology for. And the first person to invite me to come visit was EOS Costa Rica. And I, so I took a trip down there in October of 2018. They have a program called EOS Surf. This program is open to anyone who's looking to learn more about uh, EOS and what it can do for their team. You can actually go to eosurf.com and sign up for the program. They provide housing and um, surf lessons. It's kind of a work-life balance program where you can go learn more about the software and what it means. So I took a trip down there. Unfortunately, the weather did not permit me to surf. So instead, we went and hiked a volcano where we kind of talked about these concepts and talked about these ideas. 
found it to be a really awesome program. So anybody who's looking to kind of go out there and learn more, talk to US Costa Rica. So while I was there, I was fortunate enough to be a part of launching the Blockchain Association of Costa Rica. And we also held an all-girls hackathon uh, in San Jose, where we taught the girls how to program a smart contract on EOSIO. By then, I knew I needed to get out more, so I started the Cypher Glass Roadshow. That's where I started um, really traveling and getting out there. So far, I've done 14 countries. I'm really proud of that. I started with Thailand, showed up, packed my bags, kind of showed up there, and I was really surprised. They had a really strong uh, crypto community and EOS community. So I started attending all these different meetups, meeting up with other block producers there, discussing the ideas of how we could use this technology which led me to work with the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society in Thailand. One of the systemic problems that's going on there is they have over uh, 200,000 red light district workers who have no representation in their system whatsoever. They're not protected, they're not, they have no benefits, and identity is a real problem. So we got to talking about how EOSIO could potentially solve that problem. Currently, they are, uh, we are in discussions with them about building a DAP where the red light district customers can capture their own identity, create a QR code, and then the workers can actually snap that QR code to protect their identity, but have some accountability and redundancy built into that system. So I'm really excited to announce more about this by the end of the year. So this is a list of the countries that I have visited in the last year. Uh, and all of them are currently using EOSIO in some way or another or exploring a system on it. My favorite is Vietnam. I've ended up settling there in Saigon. I live there now. I'm actually working with a company called Highlands Coffee. And they are developing a supply chain management system on EOSIO to better track where the coffee is coming from and how it's being distributed. Together, we've started to host these uh, blockchain events called Blockchain Over Beer. And it's hosted with uh, Tomo Chain, Angel Hack, and Asia Blockchain Review. They are a really great group of people. Um, I'm really excited to kind of take back whatever I learned here or there and just keep bouncing around. The last uh, program that I want to mention that's built on EOSIO is Family EOS. Is this a basic income experiment going on in Venezuela, put on by EOS Venezuela? You can actually donate EOS to this account here, and it goes to helping families. Um, they've actually been able to inject over a thousand EOS into this ecosystem, over a hundred families helped, and over 450 individuals impacted. And here are some of the faces and families that have actually received the help. We're literally starting an economy from the ground up in a system like this, where you know we're giving them usable money where they have a runaway fiat currency problem and massive corruption, where they're actually able to exchange and work for these uh, work for these EOS. So if you have a couple EOS. Please donate it there. So this word has a lot of meaning to all of us. It's something that I think can build us up, but it can also tear us down. It's been a big word in all of our lives. Um, decentralized is a concept. I think it's more of a spectrum. But right now, I think we're experiencing a little bit, experiencing a little bit of tribalism in our community. And I'm hoping that in 2020, the word that we start to use is this one inclusivity. I think speculation and punching holes in projects is very important, but I also think that being inclusive and understanding that just because they're not working with your software or your chain doesn't mean that they don't have value to add. And I hope that everybody can start to listen to each other a little bit more and we can learn from one another because uh, it's, it's been a rough ride. I think there's a lot of um, FUD out there and, and we can get kind of caught up in it and um, I'm hoping that that tide kind of turns, and I know that within the EOS community, we're really trying to make that impact towards more interoperability, less tribalism, and I'm really proud of this community. So I feel like I'm living proof that these economies work. If I've been able to support myself on it for over, you know, over two years, then I think anyone can do it. And I hope that you guys, um, you know, when you think about EOS, you think about these projects that are actually helping people versus the articles that you're seeing in the main media. So once again, my name is Adriana. I work with Cypherglass. This is how you can get a hold of me. You can visit our website to learn more about Cypherglass. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for showing up, guys.